with all the COVID related issues, we are trying to keep everything as normal as we can. And hopefully we are trying to be a little bit entertaining while you're housebound or social distancing at least. So it's not that we don't think this is an important subject. It's just we are not experts in that subject. So we're going to do another subject that we're not experts in. And we're going to try to keep this to cars and racing. So appreciate you guys listening to our podcast. Thank you. Bye. Or hello. 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 How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> From the halls of their great house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. They're soon to be Wonder Woman, Vicky Fisher, and our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be millionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with us. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes in Training Podcast. I'm going to be your host for this episode, and my name is Bill, and I'm all by my lonesome today, except I have a very cool repeat guest. We have Brent Picasso, Autosports Lab. What's you doing, Brent? Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so we just launched a uh, an Indiegogo campaign for Tire X, our tire temperature sensor. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's... It's pretty exciting. It uh, it had a really good response. On the uh, the first three hours, we hit the 100% funding mark, which was very surprising for us because launching a product during these weird times is you know always kind of uncertain. So we're really excited with the uh, with the feedback that we got from our community and uh, all of the excited customers. Well, it does. It does look pretty, pretty cool. And uh, we'll just, we'll just go back to the beginning just a little bit in case somebody missed our earlier episode. Uh, yeah. You have two companies. One is Autosports Labs, and I believe the second one that's separate is Podium. Is that correct? Right. Podium is like a, it's like a division of Autosport Labs. Uh, we're okay. we're setting it up to be like an independent edit entity, uh, potentially might spin off into its own, own company, but that's kind of TBD. And Autosport Labs makes hardware and the stuff that runs inside of the car. And Podium is kind of like a, a it's a, it's like a, a, it's a platform for viewing telemetry data for motorsports. Kind of like we're building something similar to the F1 app, but for every racer. So it's a uh, one that makes the hardware and one makes the uh, presentation analysis type software. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the po- podium is the like the website and the app that people use for viewing and sharing, fan engagement, and uh, race capture is made by Autosport Labs, and that is just the physical hardware that is compatible with Podium that can stream live stream data to Podium. Right. So Podium is able to to use other hardware as well and, and incorporate them in, I believe. That's right. Yeah. So we have a, a device that is what you would call a telemetry bridge for other data systems. So data systems, typically, almost all data systems don't have a built in telemetry feature for real, like live streaming data in real time. So we have a product called Podium Connect, which is a small box that is a bridge between Podium and their existing data system like AIM or MoTeC, it just right. sits in the middle and it lets you reuse the investment of your expensive data system and right. adds the capability of real-time telemetry to it. Well, that was that was one of the reasons why we uh, we went with your system. We, we decided to keep it all in the family. So hopefully the interactions are even more seamless, but we thought that exactly. having the ability to see the data in the car is great, except some of our drivers 
uh, they're occupied looking out the windshield or, or overly occupied in some cases. So we wanted to have the ability to actually see it in the pit stage or in the paddock, or even if we're not at the track, we could actually watch it and, and see what's going on and, you know, be able to say, Hey, you know, the, uh, the water temperature is 250 degrees. I, th I think we've got a problem guys because water doesn't like 250 degrees very much. So, um, <laughs> so that was why we went with it. And, uh, Hopefully we'll be able to get it installed and working and up and running in time. Uh, if we can ever get done with the uh, the must do list and get to the uh, really really want to do list, so it's there. It's waiting for me. Unfortunately, me is occupied, but we'll get there. Don't worry. I will bother you with questions. Don't worry. Absolutely, we're here, and so is our community, ready to help. Absolutely. Bat Cave Weapon of the Week. So one of the videos that I saw back before you even came on with us the first time, which probably a few months ago now, maybe maybe almost six months ago, had this um, graphical display of tire temperatures. Basically, it had the four, four tires in a graphic type layout so you could tell which tire was what and it would tell uh, temperatures and uh, I think it might even tell pressures. And I believe that this finally came to fruition this week. So... Uh, could you describe that? Because I, I mean, it's not like tires matter when you're racing a car. It's it's not like it's the only thing touching the ground. So it's, it's a little important. <laughs> the seatbelt dragging out the door, maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's not on purpose, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with uh, the goal with Podium, kind of like kind of backing up a little bit, we we want the the interface to be beautiful and usable and friendly and approachable and we just want to draw people into just seeing what the data looks like instead of this really uh, an experience with these sterile squiggly lines, you know, in a, in a, you know, windows 95 style interface. So the, the podium app runs on all mobile devices and it's very interactive touch oriented. And on, so kind of with, with that theme, we were at uh, a lucky dog race demoing our, our system and somebody walked up and said wow that's like really that's cool but that's really hard to understand we had a line chart set up with some gauges and the squiggly right. lines were just kind of confusing people so we thought you know he's right you know that 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 even even an engineer at a glance would you would have to pause like the, the cognitive load on looking at a squiggly line, you kind of have to like, try, like understand what squiggly line it is and see it in context with everything else. And we thought there could be a better way to visualize information from a car. So we kind of created this top down overview, like let's say you're flying above the car and you're looking down at the car and you could see indicators of what the car's doing at a glance and we we can't we came up with a design that showed icons for the engine and the transmission and fuel fuel tank uh and w which would all be color coded to show kind of like their status at a glance right. not to take away from the squiggly lines but to to kind of just be a, at a glance indicator of what the current status is on top of that we added zones for each tire that would show the tire the tire temperatures across those zones if you had those sensors installed right. on the car and then as a car was going around the track you would see in real time like how hot those tires were getting on different parts of the track while the car was racing so instead of interpreting so let's say each tire has four zones or 16 zones if you right. if you had that many zones but let's just say four zones that's for each for four tire sets, 16 zones total. And how would you fit that onto a squiggly line chart? That That's just kind of crazy. Like yeah. it would be really hard to understand that. But if you could see it at a glance and say, okay, so in that part of the track, something's weird ha something weird is happening, then you can kind of zoom in on the actual data and look at the temperatures. But it's a, it's a way of understanding at a glance what the the car is doing and uh, that has had um huge feedback like huge response like people are people are going 
I want that. They're like pointing to it and said, how do I get that? That's right. really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, anybody who watched the, uh, the Schwarzenegger movie Predator knows about thermal mapping. So, you know, we, <laughs> we, uh, we like That's our That's where colors. it all started. Exactly. And uh, I, I think the, the one thing that even the squiggly line dudes have to realize is there's, there's, you know, certain engineers may love the squiggly line, but that may not work for their artistic wife. Not that I'm using an example uh, that I'm very <laughs> familiar with, but, you know, sometimes graphical is a better way to display for certain people. And, and the, uh, the lines take a little bit of acclimation to, to get used to and, and how to interpret them. And the, the yeah. colors are kind of intuitive. So, you know, hot is red and green is cold and blue exactly. is colder. So um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little quicker. And sometimes, especially when you're, when you're running a race weekend, uh, especially when you have multiple cars, sometimes you just don't have a lot of time to sit there and digest. Okay. My squiggly line in turn six and you, you just can look at the color and it's, it just makes things a whole lot easier, a whole lot better. So, um, yeah, look at glance up at the screen and say, Oh crap, something's mm -hmm. hot. Yeah. Hot, hot because red. Yeah. Hot because red, it could be <laughs> <Do> car. something. <laughs> Could exactly. be car, could be tire, could be driver, could be track, you know, and then you got to kind of figure that oh, yeah. stuff out too. But, uh, you know, hopefully our drivers are driving perfectly and uh, that means we got new drivers and hopefully our cars are running perfectly, which means we borrowed them from somebody else because we can't do that. But uh, yeah. at least we'll know now. So, um, right. Driving styles wildly vary be between team members and you without, without seeing that information, the first driver goes out and everything's fine. And then the second driver goes out and they're like radioing and it's like, Oh crap, the tires are so greasy. What's going on? And, and you just, you don't know why could it be that the, you know, ambient temperature went up, something's wrong with the tire. Maybe the driver's just driving differently, right? Yeah. Pushing it too hard in, not to, um, yeah, um, exactly. Especially for stuff we do with the endurance racing, you know, it's, uh, it uh, it's it's more a, a a war and not a, a sequence of battles. And um, you know, we we want to be there at the end. And sometimes our drivers may be pushing it too hard to make it possible to get there at the end. So we can we can actually see that and uh, you mm -hmm. know adjust accordingly and, and communicate through the radio like slow down or speed up. <laughs> You've got a lot more. So it, uh, it would Drive be great. Smoothly. Yeah, a little more smooth. Yeah, or you know, you're going in too hot you know, whatever. So it's a, it's a, a additional arrow in our quiver, which we will probably mess up, but at least we have it now as opposed to just guessing. And, you know, it's, it's a, uh, I don't know, 50 steps up from the usual, you know, go out, run five laps, go in and, and measure your tire temperatures really fast. You know, you can actually do things on the track live. Yeah. So I, like measuring the tires after the car comes in the pits, it's, it's kind of funny because, the, the tire temperature varies so quickly while on track. If you're trying, let's say there's halfway through the track, there's a certain sequence of corners that mm -hmm. might be exercising the car and the tires in a certain way. By the time you come into the hot pits, that is all changed. Yeah. You just have no idea what's going on out there without being able to measure it in real time. Yeah. Like and the, at that, yeah. And in context with the, that part of the track. Right. And so. it kind of just smooths out like peanut butter as opposed to getting real numbers or yeah colors. and like like being able to measure that's a that's an existing technology being able to measure measure the tire temperatures out on the uh, in that part of the track but what people have to do is pull that data download pull a memory card transfer it to a laptop load it into the software and you know like the car's cooling down by the time you're doing that yeah. Right. Or it's the next day or something like that. But if you can see that in the pits while somebody's out there, you're looking at it while they're racing and you're going, Oh yeah, there's too much camber on the, the front left or something. Yeah. Or, or, or it's different or we, from left to right or whatever. Exactly. Like you know exactly what knob to turn or change the tie rod. You they can pull into the pits, you can get under there, tweak the tie rod on that one side, for example send them out and you would be able to turn that turn that testing around within minutes rather than like oh we'll get it on the next track day and then like yeah. and then like then it's a fading memory so right or so getting it in real time up. is a, yeah. a huge advantage absolutely and time is time matters right in absolutely racing. you uh you pay by the hour right right 
in one way or the other. So um, pretty much. So I, I guess for those who haven't seen this or for those who are having a tough time trying to figure out exactly what this is, how does it, how, it, what is it and how does it work? I guess would be a, the, the stupid question that I can't come up with a good question yet, but um, you know, I know you don't have thermometers sticking out of the wheel well, poking my tire as I'm going around the turn, but dragging know. on the tires. Yeah. It's probably we have 16 the... thermometers touching the tires, just dragging on top. It's yeah. a, it's kind of a new thing. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very cool. Hopefully you're not using mercury, but you know, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so tire, so tire X is a, it's a compact little box, little sensor box. It's about, um, 60 by, uh, 20 millimeters it's pretty it's pretty small and it has like a thermal imaging camera in it and this is very similar to what you might see like a, those FLIR cameras that they're using they're using for thermal analysis or like that the movie predator yes uh, but it's lower lower resolution than like what you might see in the movies but it's it's enough to, be to get able you to, to the chopper <laughs> Get to the chopper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's enough to uh, to take a picture of the tire, of the, the the surface of the tire while while you're out on track, and it has the the uh, the range of um, so it's zero to three hundred centigrade, which is I think I can do the math uh, in real time, like about five hundred degrees. But the uh, the operating temperature of a tire, the useful operating temperature of a tire is kind of like in the low, very low 200s before it starts. That's like the peak, depending on the tire, of course. Right. But when you measure, when you, it measures what the, the, the heat of the tire across the tread of the tire using uh, thermal, this thermal uh, array. Mm -hmm. And it collects that information in real time, does a whole bunch of number crunching, and then sends that information out uh, onto a uh, CAN bus network, which then your data system can collect, and then right. correlates that with where you're on track, your GPS position, your speed, your G-forces, and all that, it, it, all that data is aligned together with the, the, the temperatures of the tires. And the each tire, the, the sensor supports up to 16 zones per tire. Most From people one will sensor. go with on one sensor. Okay. Right. So most people will do the same thing and just do four zones because that's really kind of all you need. But the right. sensor can do 16. So we're like, of course, we'll, we'll support what the sensor can do. Right. And, but let's say you have four zones. So you have four, that's 16 total zones for the car. And then all that information is fed up to the the data system and then that's collected for uh for either real-time analysis or after the fact okay and then uh graphically that's displayed i guess in the podium system as four tires four tire icons i guess maybe mm -hmm. uh, which i which i always think of as the the contact patch and yep. the and the contact patch will vary in color depending on the temperature across from inside to outside of the, the four different tires. And you can kind of watch that as you're going around the track. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll show, it will show the, the temperature of those zones in these like vertical stripes. If you're looking down on, on top mm -hmm. of the tread of the tire, uh, showing the, the relative temperatures based uh, with color, color coding. Mm -hmm. And then the data is also available for uh, plotting in charts or gauges or, we have another we have another chart that's kind of it looks like a horizontal line chart mm -hmm. but is a heat what we call a heat chart where each band shows up each color band will show up on that chart across time or distance okay so you can you can see that kind of the equivalent of what you saw on the tire in, in the instantaneous temperature okay so you could but, pick a point on the track and see your instantaneous tire temperature the 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 top down view overview of the car shows the instant instantaneous tire temperature, but the heat chart will show that uh, it's like a ribbon of heat colors, like a heat trace, from a heat trace across the uh, across the distance of the track. Oh, okay. So, 
not having ever had this data, so obviously never having used this data, I would think, you know, me being my my little engineering dude, certain tires or certain tire brands or certain tire makes of brands will have a, a different sweet spot in terms of performance versus temperature. So we right. could use this to determine, hey, uh, the Azenis, they run at X degrees really well, but if we go plus 10, they get that like greasy feeling that we we all know and love. I was and just going to mention the Falcons. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a classic, classic right. thing. And then the uh, the RS fours, which seem to be bulletproof, and they just don't care. At least our impression of what we do, they yeah. don't care what temperature it is, and they don't care how many laps you do, and they just stay the same. And you can make you could actually maybe quantify that now, as opposed to that's our impression. Right. So that will like overall tire temperature will be an indicator that you, you can look at that and you know, the driver may say, wow, it's, it feels kind of greasy. And then you can look at the temperature and, and uh, go, they're too yeah, hot. they're kind of, they're kind of hot. Or another thing is, so here's what, here's what people don't may, you may, may not know without being able to measure this information, but let's say you're, you have uh, way too much camber mm -hmm. and you're, really kind of only using the inside edges of your tires. This is kind of like an extreme example for illustration purposes. I mean, I've used you're that going excuse. out. Yeah, you're going out and you're like, wow, the, it gets greasy really fast all the time or something like that. And right. you look at the look at the information, look at the look at the, the tire temperatures and you see that the inside edges of the tires are getting consistently hotter than the, than the outside edges. So your 245s could be like a 10 speed wheel. I mean, kind of, yeah. I mean, right. it, that, and in a, at, at the, and in an extreme example, then, then you would, you would see that effect and you're just not using all of your tire. Okay. How does the system work in, you know, non-ideal conditions? Let's say if it's a, uh, a rainy track or a rainy day or dusty track, like, you know, some of the West Coast tracks, they get, they get a little sandy, they get a little dusty. Is that, is that impact things? Does that shift things around or it just changes your temperatures? Well, with a, with a, um, with a rainy day, yeah, that changes the dynamics completely because that your, your temperatures are way down because the, 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 uh, the tires are shedding a lot of heat. Yeah. Just evaporate because of the heat. rain. Yeah. They're the evaporation from the rain plus, the uh, the ability that they just can't even get up to temperature when they're when they're wet like that. And, but you're still uh, able to see the temperature. You would be able to see the temperature still. Yeah, it would just okay. be a lot lower. Right. So so my theory yeah. of when we drive in the rain of changing the air pressure because the temperature doesn't ever get to the temperature that we think of as normal. I could actually verify that. Uh, yes, you would be able to tell. Yeah, a lot of people will drop. Uh, a lot of people would drop temperatures when when it gets rainy if they can't change tires. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that that allows when you drop the drop the pressure, you you have more compliance in the sidewall, and the the tires can um, grip a little bit, tiny bit longer before they let go uh, under low Maybe traction a little scenarios. Heat, a little more heat. Yeah, and then the and then if they can hold on a little bit longer, then you can build up a little bit more heat. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's just yeah, obviously, as you know, driving in the rain is quite a bit. It's a completely different driving style. Yeah, our team's usually faster because <laughs> we feel yeah, terrible I mean, in when the dry. <laughs> when you're when you're good at when you're good at, when you're when you have skilled drivers in the rain, that can be a huge advantage, especially. And then on top of that, if the car is is set up to 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 be able to uh, take advantage of that as well, like all wheel drive or front wheel drive. Yeah, anybody who makes our competitors go slower, that we just take that as awesome. They're getting closer and closer to us now, so right. uh, we, or, we view or that if as you have a win. limited slip. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, is there that if you just think about it, you've got at least four tires. Sometimes, you know, Honda's going around turn only use three at a time, but you know, you've got four tires. Let's say you have four temperature zones. That's a lot of data just from there mm -hmm. assuming you've got a, a bunch more data are we starting to get close to the limit of being able to communicate that data out of the car or we still have some headroom there well if you have 16 
if you have, uh, let's say, four zones and 16 channels, right. then um, there's still, um, like, at least speaking for, for the race capture system, right? Uh, the race capture system can map 100 CAN bus channels. So you still have quite a few channels uh, left over for, for other things, which okay. is great because you can, you can say, uh, you know, what's the ambient temperature if you have one of those, or what, right. what is the, what's the tire wire, what is the tire pressure correlated with the, the temperatures if you have a TPMS system right. uh, in the car or all sorts of other factors, you know, GPS position, uh, accelerometer and gyro. So right. and the, the more, the more, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So internal to the car, no problem getting that data out from the car to the pit or elsewhere. No problem. Still, we're still well no, within. No. Oh yeah, totally. No issues. All right. Cool. So we have more toys to buy that we have to <laughs> have to then install. But the, you know, we didn't we didn't start racing cars to make money. Because <laughs> if we did that, we're we're failing even worse than we thought we were. So. Yeah. We we so with the with the tire X. A kit that we developed um, a, a bit, spent quite a bit of time just developing a like a plug and play harness that will that should save people like hours of installation time. Mm -hmm. uh, so without without the plug and play harness, you would mount the sensor at each corner and then run wires to the individual sensors. Oh, okay. The crimp and solder or whatever uh, they say you're not supposed to solder in the in a race car, but some people do. But right. um, create those connections, run them to your data system, test it. And that, that could be, that could be a, a f, you know, full day's project. Sure. So there's an optional plug and play harness that we've designed, which allows you to run a single cable in a loop around the car that would, would have what base would, would look like uh, little Y splitters that, so a cable would get to the corner, it would split off, connect a tire X uh, with a, a small industrial uh, M8 connector, circular mm -hmm. connector, kind of like motorsport grand, grade. Yep. And then the, the, ca the, the cable would just continue around to the next sensor. You would connect a tire X to that and then to the fourth sensor. And you then, then you just have one connection to your data system, the power oh, and then okay. two wires for CAN bus. So that should save quite a bit of time for sure. uh, doing an installation. And we know that that's like hugely important for, for our customers. Even, even people who have, who are fully capable of wiring up or oh, doing a wiring harness would, would opt for a, uh, for the convenience because it's just time. It's just there. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. So the sensors themselves, they mount on the wheel well, I guess. You would mount them on a bracket uh, in the wheel well that would face, uh, you can mount them for, forward of the tire or backwards uh, of the, from the tire, mm -hmm. or you can mount them uh, above the tire. And we designed Tire X to be uh, very low profile so that you could mount them uh, above the tire looking down. And right. that's especially important on the front wheels because the st it would minimize the uh, error induced from a steering angle. Right. So if you're steering, let's say if they're mounted uh, on, on the back side of the tire and then you start steering, well, then that starts changing your zones. Right. And then, and it's kind of important because heat's generated in corners and then you're yes. steering in corners. So, so we, we took, uh, um, uh, we placed eff extra effort to design a sensor so it's as flat as possible, so it can just you can mount it above the tire if you wanted to. Okay, so if you have room and you don't have to worry about it, it you mount it above. If not, you can go in front or behind. In front or behind, yeah. Probably worst would be beneath. I would think that would be that. <laughs> <laughs> it's low profile, but it's still got a profile. It's very, very low profile. <laughs> okay, so it seems like. Kind of that that wish list thing. I, I think when before you came on the uh, first time, you showed me a video of of stuff that was coming, and this is one of those things that was coming. And I was like, "Oh, we need one of those." And you're like, "Settle down, Sparky." But uh, 
everybody needs one, right? I'm sorry. Well, at least one, you know, we need one in every car. So, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be customers again. That's not a problem. We'll, uh, we'll get them out there. So it seems like a uh, continuously improving system and uh, looks like a lot of, uh, a lot of work on your end to try and make things as easy as you can for your customers on our end and uh, greatly appreciated by everybody. And uh, should get some data out there and maybe people can start making some better decisions because we're race car drivers. We don't make good decisions. We, we just try to make a little bit better decision. So. Yeah. It's uh, using the data. It's, it squashes speculation. It's maybe not as fun in some ways, but uh, lets you just move forward with uh, other, exactly. other plans and, uh, and make informed decisions, right. On, on what to do next on your car setup or whatever it might be. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So we've got the, uh, generally speaking, we've got the, let's call it the entry level. Um, I always think of it for HPDE cars and track day cars, yeah. where, where you just have the, the one system that goes in and it uh, can be moved between cars. Um, that one is, what's the Race model? Race Capture Track. Race Capture Track. Yep. And, and then you've got the middle system, which is one we're putting into our race cars, which is... Um, yeah. Which name is that again? That is the Race Capture Pro. So That's it's right. like it's it's Race Capture Track with a whole bunch of extra stuff on it uh, for dedicated race cars, like direct sensor inputs, exactly and, uh, the ability to do built-in uh, telem real-time telemetry. Exactly, and both of those are able to be used with Podium, just like most other data capturing yeah. systems. And it's and funny, like even the and our entry-level system has the ability to map 100 CAN bus channels. And has two CAN bus networks, so it's it's feature packed. People are, people look at that and go, oh, "Wow, I could just get this one." That's plenty. And we're like, "Yeah, you can." Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you need direct sensor inputs, then get uh, the Race Capture Pro system. But mm -hmm. the Race Capture Track is is we did just didn't didn't see a reason to just arbitrarily turn off features in the in, because we're using yep. kind of a common hardware design between both systems. It's just more features in the Race Capture Pro. Right. And then you've got a third, the whole enchilada system, which it's probably not called the whole enchilada because I can't keep track of names. But what was the third system that you have? Well, the third system is uh, is the telemetry bridge. That's the that's the Podium Connect device. Ah, okay. Okay. Right. So that's kind of like a uh, a Race Capture Pro with a built-in telemetry. But without mm -hmm. the sensor inputs and the and no GPS and no accelerometer, it's it's strictly only gets only the only data that it broadcasts in real time is what it can get from an external system. It doesn't really generate its own. Right. It doesn't have its own sensors. And uh, by design, that's intentional. Okay. Excellent. We will uh, we will report back. We have a a couple things that we need to do. Oh, I've got one one stupid silly question. So okay. I know it's hard to imagine, especially since we talk offline a lot, that I am overthinking things. But let's just say I'm overthinking things. So on the um, the smaller system we have, you can mount the sensor. We want to mount the sensor fixed, either inside the dash of the car with view through the windshield or outside the car, uh, which would be better. Is there a typical way that those are done in a, in a case where the it's going to go in and out of the car? Oh, so you're, you're talking about the, the GPS? Yes. The GPS antenna? Yeah. yeah. So if it's a dedicated race car, then what people do is they, it has a long cable, and I think it has a three meter cable. Yeah, it's pretty. So um, people will put it on the roof, put a little drill, a little hole in the roof with a grommet, or just run it, run the cable down along the A pillar and into mm -hmm. the car or just kind of get it in, inside the car through the top right. of the A pillar, depending on the design of the car. Yeah. Cars don't have windows, uh, race cars and endurance racing. You can do that easily. Uh, roof, roof mount is the best. Roof mount's the yeah. best. Yep. So, so what if somebody, I don't know, let's say they had a Miata. So roof is probably right. not the best plan, but that's also a, a daily driver car. So how would one conquer oh, that little driver. bit of, yeah. So daily driver, you could put it, I've seen people put it on 
so if it's so if it's a race car Miata, you put it on the rear parcel shelf or kind of like right above the parcel shelf right. in front right. of the in front of the rear trunk. That's a good spot. Other p- people, daily driver Miatas, have put them put the antennas in a center console, and that's pretty good too because there's just no there's no metal uh, above you. Oh, so it just goes through the canvas top. Yeah, yeah, totally. Ah, yep, that, I was thinking it was line of sight. Okay. Yeah, or you know you could put it on the you could put it on the the dashboard, but if you don't want to like look at look at a, a little antenna on the dashboard, then just a center console is is um is pretty good too. Okay, so that won't help our RF driver friends out there, but you know I'm not one of those guys because I couldn't fit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so another another thing that people haven't probably don't think about as much as they could is if the if the dashboard itself is RF transparent, like there's no metal up underneath the dashboard if you could get the antenna way up underneath underneath the dashboard oh yeah, yeah. and just work so that there's just a little bit of material between the outside and the on the, and the underside of the dashboard mm-hmm. that could be a really good stealth installation but you would um want to double check that okay okay so like double double check the the signal quality signal quality yeah kind of do a do a do a comparison so all right, that was one of the things we were worrying about. I was I've played with it in two different cars, but I haven't firmly mounted it on either one. It was just kind of like, can I get this to work, which was easy, and then can I get it to work with the podium, which was easy. So uh, yeah. now it's time to start making some decisions and maybe get some more uh, GPS antennas and just have them proliferate across the uh, the cars that we race in. So it'll be fun. We're yeah, having a great time totally. with it. Happy to so, help. So I uh, I set up a, a racetrack around the block here. Um, so, nice. So I, I don't quite know my tire temperatures as I'm ripping through the stop signs in the local neighborhood, but you know I don't necessarily think I need to just yet. But uh, you know, someday when we're not allowed to, uh, when we're back allowed to go out to a racetrack, I will I will be very interested in using this in something that's a little more official than my uh, my corner. So. Yeah, we have we have a, a test route as well for um, testing updates to the app and the firmware, and uh, it's it's funny. It's sometimes it's challenging just to find a loop on the regular streets where you could just kind of continuously flow without coming to a stop. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that. that is that is funny. But um, testing at the track is always better. It's great. I, I see some rumblings about uh, track days uh, opening up, so I think there is hope. I saw one that popped open and I was all happy about it and said, oh, this is awesome. It's great. I'll be at the uh, the NASA Great Lakes region in mid-Ohio. No problem. That was a Friday. On a Monday, I go to sign in and it's full. <sighs> Waiting list. There's some pent-up demand. I yeah. guess. I don't know. That's so good. That's good. People want to get out. Exactly. Get, get past us. So for all our NASA Great Lakes people who have pull, get me in, please. I want to go. Right. I mean, like you can have a track day where you just roll up, keep the windows rolled up and just do everything through like a like a video conference. I guess. I don't and know. Like when you go out and go out and drive, never get out of your car and leave the track. I mean, that's like perfect social distancing. Exactly. Well, nobody ever wants to drive with me anyway, so it's not any different from normal. So. You lean out the windows like, hey, is my tire flat? <laughs> That's about it, right? I can't get out. Yeah. I'm not allowed to talk to you, but could you just look? Is there rubber still there? So, yeah. I hit a pothole the, uh, when was it? Friday. And the uh, the tire, I'm used to getting the, the bubbles. This one actually delaminated. So it's, oh, uh, man. it's lovely. So we'll be getting a new set of tires on that one. So, awesome. Yeah. I, I hate hitting, hitting potholes. And my, I have, we have an E36, my daily driver's an E36 M3 with, the um not the race suspension but the h&r sport package mm-hmm. and whenever uh, i hit potholes and i'm just, it's so cr- i cringe every time i hit a hit a like a a, a bad hole or something especially because i'm running the the kose k1s which are right um i love their their classic i mean they fit the car mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah and like the looks and kind of the era but they're kind of fragile Yes, I kind of see them on race cars, and it's like, nah, it's not a really a good race car wheel, but I like it on my daily driver. It's it's good. Yep, we've we've bent one on the racetrack. It was inherited when we purchased the car on our E36, mm-hmm. and uh, we will not be replacing it. So, it uh, 
it is a little a little more aluminum like than steel like so mm-hmm. yeah we've got some we've got some uh got a full set now so we're good to go for this season so did we cover everything on your tire x system i think yeah anything? we i i believe so yeah okay. we it, it was uh yeah thank you no worries. Uh, if possible, we'd probably like to get a couple uh, pictures that we'll post with the uh, the episode if, in case people want to see what the Tyrex uh, looks like and what the data output looks like, just uh, in case our descriptions were not quite as eloquent as we were aiming for. But uh, it should be available on our website and should be available with the podcast. Oh, thank you. And um, do you want a, like a video link also? Like the sure, I can do a video. video. I think I can. Well, um, let me let me rephrase that. I think I can do a video. <laughs> yeah, if you can do a video, you could just include the, the main video, which just has like everything. Okay, um, do that. Or cool. we could we could supply Set. some images. Either one, just let yeah. it, let me know. We'll do both. Maybe we'll get a. If we can't do the video, we'll get a link to the video. So we'll uh, we'll figure something out. So okay. Hopefully everybody uh, now knows a little bit more about your company and knows a little bit more about Tyrex. And uh, we uh, anticipate seeing a lot of these out on the track and uh, thank you and your team for coming up with these. And uh, we look forward to using them and seeing if it's uh, really that we're that bad of a driver or if it's the, uh, the tires I'm, I'm going with. It's us probably. Thank you. Yeah. The uh, enthusiasm from the community is really what keeps us going. So thanks so much. No worries. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Dominating with Dawson. All right, welcome back, Ben. We've got uh, we've got a lot of people who are trying to drive as well as they can, and they may be relatively new. And um, one of the things that we were talking about before was, you know, maybe they could watch some things online. And not only is it important to watch on YouTube or wherever you see it, somebody who's in a similar type of car than you, but it could be even more useful if you can find somebody in a similar type of car that also drives in a similar way. Sure. So how do you think the best way to go about being a YouTube stalker is? Do you think there's, there's some people we could send them to that are, these are probably professionals and in, in much better cars than we drive typically, or how would you characterize like a, a few different types of drivers? So somebody could be on the lookout for, Oh, that, that sounds like me. Yeah, I think, uh, <clears throat> Like you said, it's important to find somebody who's driving something that's representative of what your effort's going to be. So similar car, something that's going to be, you know, and maybe the, the track you're trying to learn. So, so target, target your search to something that's going to, that's going to benefit you and, and get, help you find time quicker on the track. If you, anything you can do before you show up to the racetrack, it's going to make you faster and have a better time with the track. If you're, you know, if you, did, if you didn't do your homework and watch a ton of video, you show up cold somewhere to learn something, you know, it's going to take you more time to get up to speed and more time to start having an, as much fun as you could possibly have. So, so learning some video is part of doing your homework and part of just getting, getting faster in general when, when you're away from the track, right? Yep, absolutely. So suppose you're going into a race and you're, you're doing a race this weekend and it's at a track that's relatively new to you. Maybe you've been there once or twice, but you just want to go do it. And you're driving a, a low power car, but it turns really well. Right. I'm thinking you're um, going to go look at, spec me out of races maybe yeah something like that i mean also think about this too we i think i think we probably are, have some lemons ears on this thing and if i was gonna go drive a lemons race you know uh when i moved back from california in 2014 i was gonna go i had done a track there too at cmp but i wanted to go run the lemons race there i watched a little bit a little bit of low power club racing video like uh, some spec e30 spec me out of stuff just to see similar speeds to what i was going to be doing the little honda i was going to drive but i mm-hmm. also went and watched some lemons racing there too just sort of see what lemons traffic flow from recent years was, was like i wouldn't go watch a, a lemons or any race video from 2007 because there's a whole different track configuration and stuff like that but try to find some recent video of the series you're going to run with too e- even if it's even if it's not going to be from a car that's like there's just so you can maybe see what what uh, you know traffic in that region is like i can tell you for sure you know four or five years ago uh chump car back in the day out on the west coast was a hundred percent different than it was on the East coast. Cause I drove both in one year. <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh, it was like some crazy Dukes of Hazzard stuff on the East coast and West coast was some of the closest, cleanest racing I'd ever done. So just as an example. Um, so I think it's important to, to find a representative video of the series and find something uh, that's, that's like the car you're going to drive. For me, I, I, I've always considered myself to be a momentum car person. So I've always used uh, videos like spec me out or spec E30 are usually pretty representative of how I'm going to attack a car and car and course. Okay. And 
so if if you're doing that, you're going to do a low power momentum car. You can do the spec spec E30, maybe even spec E36, uh, Miata, spec Miata, whatever the, the flavors are. Do some lemon scouting. You might be able to see some teams and cars that you'll see when you're out at the track. Sure. What what if you're going in something a little more a little more throaty, a little more V8, a little more uh, smash and dash kind of guy? Is there some some place they should be looking? Yeah, I um so so yeah, if you're gonna go race a, a car with some power, it's likely gonna take a, a different approach. Turn turn one at VIR is a great example. I know I keep hitting with VIR examples, but turn one at VIR is one where if you're driving a momentum car, you want to run in, turn in hard, square it off, and then a rim ride around the outside exit of uh, of the turn to to build momentum. If you're in a, if you're in a power car like a Mustang or something like that with a bunch of power, you can diamond that turn. So you can come in with a shallower turn in and hit a hit a sharper a sharper turn point way after it's the edge of the track. And then you just turn around and just stop on the gas. And since you have some power, you don't have to worry about spooling up momentum on the exit. So that's 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 a turn where you can have two different two different approaches with a you know very effective effective results. Because if you tried the momentum line with a with a horsepower car, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. And if you try to do the diamond line with a Miata, you just kind of bog down because you turn so sharp, you lost all your momentum. So does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, your minimum your minimum is too low for the Miata. Right. So so you would be if in in that case. If I, if I was going to get a chance to drive a higher power car, I would probably go watch some Camaro Mustang Challenge NASA videos. That's a class in NASA there. They also have American Iron. So they're just some kind of ground right. powered V8 series that, you know, NASA, SCCA has uh, a sedan, I think, or something like that. Uh, but they've got, yeah, I think it's a sedan is, is the big, the big power car GT one, obviously, if you're talking about GT one, it's a whole different thing, but you can go find some, some big stuff. And, and also if you want to be, a race finding watching video ninja go look up uh go look up go look at the local nasa or seca page if you, if you want to watch some good race car drivers get after it for whatever you're trying to learn uh go to those that region's website look up the results go find that guy in his video go find that guy on youtube who you want to watch go find the guy who wins every time right. go watch what he's doing and that's going to be the most effective use of your time if you're trying to you know if you're trying to find something that correlates to whatever you're going to do if you're if it's you know like like i said if you're racing a, a kia spectra and lemons are probably not going to be right. much used to that but yeah i mean just tailor tailor your video search for, for whatever you're going to do join i racing learn it you know do a sim or something like that it's even more effective but certainly uh video can help you a whole lot as far as showing up and knowing what you're doing where the track is going what about a uh front wheel drive they just go watch like uh honda challenge, honda challenge right yeah that's what i'm thinking you got you got a uh, honda challenge and I don't know what else, but there's, there's plenty of front wheel drive stuff you can find too. I just don't, it's just not what, I, what I'm tuned into, but I'm sure there's plenty of representative front wheel drive racing. that would be a great, great thing to look at. Certainly high in a challenge. Okay. So we got track, try to match a track as best you can try to match the type of car as best you can. What if somebody's just saying, I want to go see how the pros do it. Is there like the stereotypical smooth guy that they should go look for? Is there a stereotypical aggressive guy they should go look for? And, and you know, how many driving styles is there? Is there people to go play with and go stalk on? I'm the, trying to think. I, I just I I don't really I don't really go hunting for for pro videos enough to know who's what. I'll tell you this though. Um, I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about this at some point. But if, you know, if you want to try to try to find something not to do. There are a couple of pro guys who you can, you watch and you're like, oh, this guy's an alien. Like we talked about Senna, right? Oh yeah. You can't, we can't. We you, Bill and I can't watch Senna in this car. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go make I'm, that work for me right now. You might I'm be able to try there. to emulate. I'm doing that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Next time. I'm gonna, knock, I'm gonna knock that out right now. I mean, you might be able to emulate emulate parts of that approach, but if you want, if you watch a guy like that, go like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go berserk and drive like that today. You're gonna go fly it off the track and right? I, I couldn't even do it in iRacing. I wouldn't even <laughs> risk my car, and it's fake. <laughs> But but you know since since we're here talking about stuff that is fantasy video to go watch, there, so if you want to do a uh, do as I say not as you see me doing on the racetrack, there's a great one. Do you know who Lee Keen is? Have you ever heard that name before? I do. He, so uh, he's on Proving Ground with uh, one of yeah, our former guests. Yeah, he's on Proving Grounds, and he's a he's a guy who's had a had, had a great uh, pro career. He's you know he's raced with uh, uh, plenty of pro Porsche teams and stuff like that. But I think it was around the time when the Nissan GTR first came out. There's a video of him wearing like it looks like a, one of those Smokey the Bandit like a silky black jacket. He's got like it looks like a motorcycle helmet or something. He does. He's not dressed like he's racing a car. He's just dressed like a dude who's jumped in a GTR driving. Now we know There's where you're watching. There's a video of him this. with 
he's there's a video of him just yanking that GTR out VR like he does not care whether the car lives, whether he lives, and he's just is the craziest thing. And you watch it like I'm gonna go do that. You're gonna die. That guy's great. So he's a he's a great guy to go watch. Go watch Lee Keen. It's L E H K E E N. Lee Keen. That guy's videos are fantastic. There's one of him at Lamont. Have you ever seen that one? Him in the wet and Lamont. No. There's a Lee Keen video called Rain Dance. I think it's what it's called. And it's just him driving in the rain at night at Lamont. It's just all it's just all elbows the whole time. It's so much fun. But you and I are not going to be able to go do what that guy does on track. So, so yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some dangerous stuff to watch if you're the type of person to see something like, I can do it, you know, calm down. You can't. But I'm, but I'm a visual learner. <laughs> yeah, good, good <laughs> luck. <laughs> and, and for those of you at home, Lee Keen is a very big boy. He is, he He's is a tall not, fella. He is not shy on height. So. <laughs> yeah, there was that, he, they, had, they brought that, that three-rotor Mazda that won Le Mans, one of the, one of the, one of the proving grounds I watched. Yeah, he, he couldn't, couldn't fit. fit he was like, ah, what a yeah. letdown. He got his shot and he didn't get to go. So <laughs> he was he was less than happy. Yeah, but yes, yeah, so for a hundred percent, use video, use any tools that you can to to shorten your you know, to shorten your learning curve once you are at the track. Because when you're at the track, you are shelling out those dollars. Bop, 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 bop. So Pretty quick too. Make it a good time. Make 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 the best use of your time if, if that's what's up. Also. Some people might be like, hey, my fun is just showing up and seeing what's up. If that's part of your fun, don't do too much of work. Just show yeah. up and, and make it fun. But if you're competitive, do every bit of stuff you can to, to be ready by the time you get there. It's, it's almost like if you can't, in my mind, if you can't afford the time to do the homework, you shouldn't go. Unless your fetish is not doing the homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm not talking about you, Ben. I'm talking about our, our listeners who are doing what they your should do. Your dedicated listeners should do that. No, but I mean, I, I know that I, I know that I always talk about liking to, to, to drive a track brand new on the green. But, but at that point, when I get there, I have done iRacing video homework. I, I, I don't skimp on that. I, I love driving a brand new track in, in the, like the steepest circumstances, but I've done homework before I show up. And, and you, are, you are not that early in your learning curve either, so... <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. so if you were to do you know of anybody who somebody could look at or look to that is like the prototypical technical driver i've got one guy in my head tell me who you're thinking about not my favorite but probst uh, if you if you look at prost uh randy elaine, post no elaine prost oh prost He's, sorry yeah, he used to race against Senna. Oh, yeah, no, the, the professor. Yeah, so he, he would be somebody I would say that, you know, he's going to, yeah. if you look at two laps, they've got a few videos out there with him versus Senna at the same time, same car, and you look at the in-car camera, what Senna's doing versus what Elaine is doing. Worlds apart. Way far apart. Yeah. So. But I mean, I, I, I never, I never, I, I, it's, it's interesting to watch those guys approach, but what they're doing and the speeds, they're not really that relative to yeah, it's what hard I'm to. trying to learn. So I, I don't, I don't think in, in terms of like watching, watching pros to learn how to drive myself, it's, they're good ideals. Those guys will teach you the best ideals. Like you are never, you're never pausing. You're never pausing between throttle and brake. Those are the kind of things you can learn. The just generic ideals of track driving. There's no, there's no lag time between throttle and brake. Those six sort of things are things you can pick up in a rapid succession watching a Formula One driver, but you know, go, it's the, a good person to, to, to go watch the, the, that I misunderstood when you said is, is a guy named Randy, Randy Post, P-O-B-S-T. He's a, he's a great guy to watch. Doesn't make, doesn't make mistakes. He's, he's had a pro career, still big in automotive media, I think. So, and, and he gets to drive all kinds of stuff. So there's a video of Randy Post driving something like you're going to drive, type in Randy Post Miata, type in Randy Post E36, type in Randy Post Jaguar. There's something out there with him driving it. That's going to give you an idea of, how you might approach it with your car. So he's a great guy to look for because he's all over the place too. So easy yep. to find. Would you yeah, agree? Then, yeah, I would. And, you know, I, if anybody has uh, the Motor Trend app or, or even some of them are on YouTube, the uh, head-to-head videos. Uh, yeah. They used to, used to be Jason Camisa and, and uh, Johnny Lieberman. And now it's Jethro and Johnny Lieberman, although they rumors they handle Well, Randy used to do all the track videos. So you could see all the cars and you could uh, see. Yeah, I, think Randy, I think Randy does the actual testing and stuff. Yeah, like that, he does. Camera. Yeah. So, so he, you can see those. So those, are, those are great videos to watch too. And I'm sure there's plenty of stuff from, because I don't know, I never understand what the arrangement is. I think it's a pay thing like with Lucky Dog. But, um, but you know, if Randy is at the track and, and you have a car and say, hey, can we drive our car? He'll go drive your car. So there are plenty of teams who have had him uh, just go drive their car car and that footage is out there so you know teams would just say hey randy can you take a stand in our car it might be your point at yourself right now so yeah so it's out there there's plenty of 
video of this guy who's a pro uh, who doesn't make mistakes driving a car just like you want to drive. So I, he's a great one to look at as far as a technical guy who's not screwing up, not real splashy or crazy. Yep. So we got to, we got to find out exactly how far away from the curve we were, and uh, the answer for those at home, it's quite far. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I drove a lemons car faster than he did one time. We we have not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Kathy said to say hello, by the way. She was on a couple weeks back. So Kathy's awesome. Kathy. Yeah, yeah, she's she's, great. she's fantastic. She's got a uh, a race coming out this way, hopefully, in August. So we'll be there. Which track again? Uh, Charlotte at their Roval. So Lucky Dog's coming into the Roval, huh? It is. Wow. We that's can't wait. Taking a, taking a step towards. I know. Bi-coastal. Can't quite say nationwide, mm. but at least bi-coastal. Yeah. So that should be fun. We're we're uh, we're signed up bringing two cars. We may bring three cars and rent out a bunch of seats because most of the West Coast guys want to come. So we just might do it just to help support the help support the series. How so. exciting is that? Yeah, should be fun. And I know she she does it for the love of of motorsports and the people in the community too. I think. Yeah. It's just we have a lot of admiration for her. She's really, yeah, really great. She just you can always tell she's having a great time. Yeah, she has a, so much heart, and, and and her team too. She she's built up a team yeah. around her that just kind of echoes the culture and the the sentiment and the enthusiasm. Yeah, I, I you know sometimes I question her insanity because you know how can she be having so much fun with all the people like us there? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know she seems to enjoy it, so we'll we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, she's really really driven the balance of like it's 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 fun, serious racing. Mm -hmm. I mean, but still fun. It's right? still fun. Like, yeah. It's not too yeah, like, serious. Like people, people, people are nice to each other in the paddock. It's it's like yeah. it's still competitive. It's the perfect balance. They did yeah. a really good job. It is, and it's and the you know we're still relatively new, and we're not that good yet. Not for lack of trying, but you know, it just takes some time. And uh, but it's it's still got to be fun because you know nobody that we're with is going to be paying their mortgage with what they're doing. You know, if anything, we're, we're, we're making the mortgage deeper. Uh, it's <laughs> so expensive. Yeah. It better be fun. So, and she's got it. So very cool, yeah. sir. Awesome. Thank you.
I am uh, eventually going to get to the point where I can actually install your equipment in the cars, but you know, <laughs> it's just, everything keeps breaking that gets, you know, you got the, you got to fix or it doesn't run. And then the nice to fix when you really want it, you know, we're still in the got to fix it stage. So, Yeah. It's a great time to work on cars because <laughs> there's nothing else to do. Well, actually I've been, I haven't stopped it. Uh, we're one of those companies that had to stay open. So, Oh Yeah. Yeah, a lot so, of people are actually really busy too. Yeah, I keep hearing everybody saying, "Oh, they got so much time." I'm sitting there going, "I don't have any time." <laughs> and a lot of my team has tons of time, but they can't get over. So it's it's wonderful. 